GPT 5.1, Grok 4.1, and Gemini 3 all dropped this week. And if you're feeling completely overwhelmed trying to figure out which one actually matters, you're not alone. We also got Microsoft completely reimagining Windows as an AI-powered operating system, and some seriously controversial AI apps that are making people question everything. I spent hours digging through all the announcements and testing what I could, and trust me, there's something surprising in here that nobody's really talking about yet. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm breaking down everything that happened in AI this week, from XAI's emotionally intelligent Grok 4.1 to Google's most powerful model ever, plus Microsoft's vision for an entirely AI-driven operating system. We're also diving into Meta's AI marketplace features and some wild controversies that you need to know about. By the end of this video, you'll be completely caught up on what matters and what it actually means for how you use AI every day. Let's start with the model that's trying to charm its way into your conversations. Grok 4.1, the AI that actually gets you. Here's something interesting about the latest AI race. While everyone's been competing on who can solve the hardest math problems or write the most complex code, XAI just took a completely different approach with Grok 4.1. They decided to focus on something we've all been secretly craving, an AI that actually feels like it understands us. Think about your last conversation with ChatGPT or Claude. Sure, they're smart, but do they really pick up on the subtle emotional undertones of what you're saying? This is where Grok 4.1 gets interesting. According to XAI, this new version better understands nuanced intent, which means it can read between the lines of your prompts. It adjusts its tone more accurately, responds with more empathy, and here's the kicker. It maintains conversational flow, even when you're discussing something complex or sensitive. But wait, there's more to this story. The personality system has been completely redesigned. If you've ever had a long conversation with an AI, and felt like its personality kept shifting, almost like you were talking to different people. You know how jarring that can be. Grok 4.1 solves this by staying consistent across extended chats, giving you that smoother, more engaging experience where it actually feels like you're building rapport with someone. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so they made it friendlier, but did they sacrifice the brain power? And this is where it gets even better. Grok 4.1 still maintains all those strong reasoning capabilities from the Grok 4 series. We're talking improved coding abilities, better analysis, enhanced multi-step logic, and stronger recall. It's the best of both worlds, capable and conversational. The model is rolling out now on both iOS and Android within the X app ecosystem. What XAI is really going for here is positioning Grok as the witty but intelligent alternative to the big players. They want you to think of it as the AI that's both fun to talk to and actually useful. Whether that strategy works in the crowded AI market, we'll have to wait and see, but the approach is definitely different. Google drops a bombshell, meet Gemini 3. Speaking of the AI race, Google just threw down the gauntlet with what they're calling the most powerful AI model available globally. And before you roll your eyes thinking that's just marketing hype, the early reports from testers are actually backing up these claims in some pretty significant ways. Gemini 3 is rolling out across AI mode, the Gemini app, and Google's entire suite of developer products right now. What makes this launch different is the focus on three key areas. Reasoning, interactivity, and multimodal understanding. Let me break down what that actually means for you. The reasoning improvements are substantial. Early testers are reporting that Gemini 3 handles complex logic tasks with way more consistency than previous versions. It's generating more structured and professional outputs. And here's what impressed people the most. It offers deeper, step-by-step -step explanations that actually make sense. No more getting an answer and thinking, wait, how did it arrive at that conclusion? But here's where it gets really interesting. 
Gemini 3 has this standout feature that other models don't emphasize as much, rich visualizations. We're talking charts, diagrams, and dynamic layouts that adapt to your specific prompts. If you're a researcher trying to visualize complex data, a student working on presentations, or a professional who needs to quickly generate visual representations of information, this could be a complete game changer for your workflow. Now you've probably heard the term agentic AI thrown around a lot lately. Gemini 3 introduces what Google calls enhanced agentic behaviors. In practical terms, this means the model can execute sequences of tasks, navigate interfaces, and refine its own outputs based on your feedback. It's not just responding to prompts anymore. It's actually working with you to accomplish goals. Google also made a big deal about training this model for better transparency and safety. They've implemented stronger guardrails around misinformation, harmful content, and one of the biggest issues plaguing AI models, hallucination reduction. Whether these safety measures actually work in practice, we'll discover as more people use it. For developers, this is huge. You can now integrate Gemini 3 across APIs, Android apps, and web tools, and they've improved the token capacity for long-form reasoning and document processing. This launch represents Google's biggest push yet in the AI race, and they're positioning Gemini 3 as a direct competitor to GPT 5.1, Claude 3.7, and Grok 4.1. But their emphasis is different. They're focusing on interactive intelligence rather than just static text generation. Microsoft's vision, the agentic operating system. All right, this next announcement is wild, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it could completely transform how you interact with your computer. At Microsoft Ignite, the company announced something they're calling an agentic operating system. And yes, it sounds like sci-fi, but it's happening right now. Let me paint you a picture of what this actually looks like. Imagine you're working on a project. Instead of manually opening Word, creating a document, switching to Excel to pull data, then jumping to PowerPoint to create slides, and coordinating everything through Teams, what if your computer just did all of that for you through conversational commands? That's the vision Microsoft is rolling out. The centerpiece of this transformation is Agent 365, which is a new governance platform designed to help organizations monitor, control, and deploy AI agents responsibly across their workflows. Think of it as mission control for AI in your business. But the real magic is in the AI agents they've built directly into your everyday tools. These agents are now integrated into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, and even the Windows 11 taskbar. Let me give you some concrete examples of what these agents can do. They can automate complex tasks you do repeatedly, summarize lengthy documents instantly, generate entire workflows based on your habits, draft presentations from scratch, analyze spreadsheets and surface insights you might miss, and coordinate discussions across teams. And here's the crucial part. They're learning from your habits and your organization's data to get better over time. These features are available through Frontier which is Microsoft's early access program for cutting-edge AI capabilities. Microsoft is positioning this as the future of Windows, a system where apps work together through conversational commands and background automation rather than you clicking through menus and options manually. Now, you might be wondering if this is just Microsoft doing their own thing in isolation. Actually, analysts are saying that Microsoft's agentic OS vision mirrors broader industry trends toward autonomous digital workers and AI-driven productivity. But here's what makes Microsoft's move significant. Windows still powers over a billion devices. That's billion with a B. If this shift succeeds, it could redefine enterprise workflows and push AI deeper into day-to-day -day computing than anything we've seen before. Meta sprinkles AI magic on Marketplace. While we're talking about major companies integrating AI, let's not sleep on what Meta's doing with Facebook Marketplace. They're testing a major overhaul that introduces several AI-powered features. And honestly, some of these are pretty clever. First up, AI-generated product collections. Instead of you having to manually filter through thousands of listings, the AI automatically groups similar items together. Think budget laptops, vintage furniture, or baby essentials. These collections aren't static either. 
They adapt based on current trends, your location, and your browsing behavior. It's like having a personal shopping assistant that learns what you're interested in. But wait, here's a feature that addresses a real pain point. How many times have you looked at a used item listing and had no idea what questions to ask the seller? Meta's introducing AI-suggested questions that help you know exactly what to inquire about before making a purchase. Looking at a used phone, the AI might prompt you with questions like, any scratches on the screen? Or, battery replaced recently? This is brilliant because it reduces misunderstandings and helps you make faster decisions with more confidence. Now this next feature is still experimental, but it's intriguing, collaborative buying. This allows multiple users to express interest in something together. The idea is aimed at bulk buyers, community groups, or people looking to negotiate shared discounts. Imagine you and your neighbors all need the same type of furniture, and you can band together to negotiate a better price. Meta is clearly trying to transform Marketplace from a basic listing service into a full social commerce ecosystem. And they kind of have to, right? With TikTok Shop, Amazon, and Temu scaling rapidly, Meta needs to make Marketplace more than just Craigslist with a Facebook login. These AI features suggest they're serious about competing in the e-commerce space. Beyond headlines now, before we wrap up, there are three stories that didn't make the main headlines but are definitely worth your attention. Trust me, especially that second one, it's controversial for all the right reasons. The OpenAI Microsoft Money Trail leaked documents just revealed some fascinating details about the financial relationship between OpenAI and Ed Zitron got his hands on numbers that show Microsoft received $493.8 million in revenue share from OpenAI in 2024. That jumped to $865.8 million in just the first three quarters of 2025. But here's what's really interesting. The companies reportedly exchange around 20% of revenue in both directions. This isn't just coming from ChatGPT. It's flowing from Bing and Azure OpenAI services too. This leak underscores just how expensive Frontier AI development really is, and it shows how deeply intertwined these two tech giants have become. Their business models are basically inseparable at this point. The AI grief app that's dividing the internet. Okay, this next story is uncomfortable, but we need to talk about it. Former Disney actor Callum Worthy has launched an app called 2Y, and it's causing a massive backlash online. The app creates interactive AI avatars of deceased loved ones using short videos. Yes, you heard that right. The internet is not holding back, calling it demonic, emotionally exploitative, and a Black Mirror episode come to life. Some supporters argue it could help with grief and memory preservation, which is a fair point. But mental health experts are raising serious concerns, warning that this technology might blur emotional boundaries and actually disrupt the grieving process rather than help it. This backlash highlights growing ethical concerns around what people are calling digital resurrection technologies. As AI-generated memorials become more realistic and more widely accessible, we're going to see more debates like this. Where do we draw the line between preserving memories and creating something that might do more psychological harm than good? I'm genuinely curious what you think about this, so let me know in the comments. Firefox fights back with AI. And finally, some interesting news for browser enthusiasts. Mozilla is introducing AI Window, a new AI augmented browsing experience built directly into Firefox. The feature includes an integrated AI assistant and chatbot designed to help you summarize pages, extract insights, write content, and automate routine browser tasks. What makes Firefox's approach different from competitors is their emphasis on privacy. Mozilla is promising on-device or privacy-preserving processing for sensitive queries. So unlike some other AI tools where your data gets sent to external servers and analyzed, Firefox is keeping things local when it matters. AI window marks Mozilla's attempt to re-establish Firefox as an innovation leader. They're trying to bring intelligence directly into the browser without the data trade-offs we've seen with other AI integrations. Whether this is enough to win back market share from Chrome and other browsers remains to be seen, 
but it's definitely a step in the right direction for privacy conscious users. So there you have it, your complete rundown of everything important that happened in AI this week. From emotionally intelligent chatbots to the world's most powerful model. From Microsoft reimagining your entire operating system to controversial apps that are testing ethical boundaries, it's been absolutely packed. If you found this breakdown helpful, definitely hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next week's roundup. And seriously, drop a comment letting me know which of these announcements you're most excited or most concerned about. Are you Team Grok's emotional intelligence, Team Gemini's raw power, or are you just ready for Microsoft to turn Windows into an AI butler? Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, stay curious about AI, but also stay critical. These tools are powerful, but they're also evolving faster than anyone can keep up with, so it's worth questioning what they mean for how we work, create, and connect with each other. Thanks for watching.